The next application of our variational formulae that I want to present is this very important inequality called Pinsker's inequality that we have seen earlier in the course, but now we will derive it. So remember Pinsker's inequality, it says that the total variation distance, total variation distance dpq square is less than equal to is less than equal to ln2 by 2 the kullback liable divergence between p and q so d the kullback liable divergence is roughly this total variation distance square that's what pinsker's inequality says and i'll derive this bound uh, using variational formula but that's not the standard proof for this a more standard proof of this uh, inequality uh, is can be found in the chisser kerner textbook where we first observe that it suffices to show this inequality for the case of binary random variables random variables or pms which take just two values which has the support of size 2 and then we directly show it for binary random variables because there are just two parameters in binary distribution uh, one for p one for q and those two parameters we can just show this elementary inequality for those two parameters that's how that's a standard proof that's a more standard proof but i wanted to uh, present an alternative proof which uses this variational formula that we derived all right so to prove this guy this inequality so one quick disclaimer here this proof is a little bit difficult and uh, I, I, I you can go over the lecture i don't expect you to remember the proof completely but the idea is actually very nice and uh, in any case even if you don't remember the proof you should remember this inequality that kullback liable divergence is roughly the square of total variation distance this is quite important all right so let's see our proof now so first component of our proof the first component of our proof is this variational formula for dpq that we saw that dpq is max over all functions f expected value under p of fx minus the log moment generating function under q of 2 to the power fx okay. this is the variation formula which we spent quite a bit of time on and now we will choose a specific function f and apply this formula for to that specific function we apply this formula for f chosen as f uh, we will parameterize our choice of f by this lambda so we'll apply this formula to f lambda x defined as lambda times indicator function x belonging to some subset a so some subset a of our choice minus q of a that's that's the family that's the function f to which we'll apply this formula so, so when we do that what we notice is so, so we notice that uh, the this term here the expected value over p of fx this term here is exactly equal to expected value p of f lambda x for this particular choice of f is exactly equal to lambda times what is the expected value of this function function that it so this function is one when x belongs to a and zero when x doesn't belong to a since we are computing expectation under p this expected value is exactly equals to p of a this is exactly equal to p of a and this is a constant so you just get minus q of a right so that's the expected value term here when, for this particular function so what you get is d p q is equal to max over all functions and i have substituted this specific function so this is d p q is greater than equal to for any lambda lambda the lambda p a minus q a minus log expected value over q 2 to the power lambda f lambda x in fact here we can choose any subset a of our choice okay so there is a very reasonable choice of subset a for us remember we want to prove Pinsker's inequality what is it well let's choose the subset a for which this guy here is equal to the total variation distance 
okay we can find remember that total variation distance is equal to max over a p a minus q a and in fact if you choose this sorry let me let a prime root distinguish from this guy if you choose a prime equal to the set of those x for which p x exceeds q x then this is uh, that's the that's the a prime which attains d p q so we can set that subset so what we have obtained is that this kullback leibler divergence exceeds lambda times total variation distance for any lambda minus log expected value over q of 2 to the power lambda f lambda x where f lambda x corresponds to this subset a prime so this holds upon choosing a equals to the set of those x for which p x exceeds q x okay all right so what do we do with this so to move further in this bound we have to be able to control this second quantity here and so this is this is what is called a log moment generating function we have been seeing it again and again in a variational formula and this is this this quantity plays an important role in so called chernoff bound so it's a very well studied quantity so this is the counterpart of variance uh, in chernoff bound so we saw how variance plays a role in chebyshev's inequality uh, when when you want a sharper bound uh, typically called a chernoff bound this quantity is the one which determines that spread around mean and this is the counterpart of variance sometimes it's also called variance factor okay all right so so now i'll try to derive a bound for this in fact i will not derive a bound i'll recall a result uh, which which is quite useful uh, but i'll just state it without proof to bound this quantity the bound that we need here is this thing called hopkins lemma okay i'll write it here it says that for a bounded random variable with zero mean the uh, log moment generating function is actually bounded like lambda square so what's the formal statement so let x be a random variable with expected value of x being zero so this is a random variable with zero mean and uh, and let's say x takes values in this interval a to b so it's bounded it's always takes value between a and b then the log moment generating function of x so expected value of e to the power this is under natural law expected value e to the power lambda x is less than equal to b minus a square lambda square by 8 okay some number here so so it's the range where x takes values that length of the range square lambda square by 8 so this lambda square is important that it go it, it basically falls it it grows like lambda square and in in particular for gaussian random variables this bound is tight so basically bounded random variables behave like gaussian random variables with uh, variance b minus a if, if the random variable lies between b and a. okay that's the content of this hopkins lemma and how can we use this hopkins lemma let's look at our random variable uh, f lambda x note that this random variable so now we come back to our f lambda x note that f lambda x let me get capital x that's my random variable takes values just takes two values actually but anyway the values are between minus qa and 1 minus qa that's the range of values it takes and therefore by this hofting lemma hofting's 
lemma. The log of expected value under Q of 2 to the power lambda f lambda x is less than equal to so this ln2 comes out because we're changing the base but that's fine ln2 by 8 1 minus 2 q a square lambda square okay this 1 minus 2 q a square is um, is uh, less than equal to some is less than equal to 1 okay Therefore, this is less than equal to ln2 8 lambda square. Okay. That's your bound. Okay, so let's substitute this bound here into our previous lower bound for dpq. So this one is an upper bound, but there's a minus sign here, so this becomes a lower bound. So what we have. dpq exceeds lambda times total variation distance minus lambda square by 8 ln2 okay that's what we have shown And uh, this lambda can be anything of our choice. So to obtain the best bound, we can just optimize over lambda. So what's the best lambda? So this holds for every lambda in R. The best lambda is uh, you differentiate and optimize. And what you will see is, lo and behold, you get your Pinsker's inequality. Okay. So the best lambda gives you dpq square and this is for lambda star if you lambda is equal to lambda star equals to it will take a derivative 2 lambda uh, by 8 so that's uh, lambda by 4 and this is just dpq so lambda star equals to 4 by ln2 total variation distance that's the thing you substitute here right Okay, so, so this is Pinsker's inequality and we used Hofting's lemma in the middle to show this. Okay, this proof of Hofting's lemma which is not which I did not give is not very difficult actually. In fact, uh, what you can try to do is you note that this function here is 0 for lambda equal to 0. This function is also 0 for lambda equal to 0. You take the derivative of this function and feel free to take the derivative inside expectation. And uh, you will see that the derivative of this function on the right side is also 0 at lambda equal to 0. The derivative left side will also be 0 at lambda equal to 0. Then you will come to the second derivative and the second derivative is the one which will be show will uh, be bounded by b minus a square by 8 or uh, b minus a square by 2. That's the proof. Uh, but I didn't cover that proof. But uh, maybe this is something that you can look up. So. Besides using this lemma, the proof is a direct consequence of this total variation formula. So Pinsker's inequality dp square dpq square is less than or equal to ln2 by 2 uh, kullback liability divergence. This ln2 um, comes in because we are taking base uh, this this uh, kullback liability divergence as base 2. If if you use uh, if you define uh, kullback liability divergence using natural logarithm then the form you will see is perhaps easier to remember dpq square is less than equal to half of kullback liberal divergence and i'll just put an e here to remind you that this is to the base e okay sometimes this is uh, you can develop entire information theory in the base e and instead of bits you will call things as nats and nat, nat for natural okay so nats that's also common that's a common convention if you don't want to measure information in bits and you want to stick to base E, you can measure information in NATs and work with the base E. All right, so this is Pinsker's inequality. dpq square is less than or equal to half kullback liability divergence. Okay, that's what we wanted to say in this lecture. See you in the next video.